Perfect. Cool. Awesome. Here we are. Okay. Sorry, I apologize, guys. Can you uh, turn that light down? That light is uh, way too bright. All right, guys. Sorry, a little bit of technical difficulties using a laptop, and that didn't work. So we are on my computer. I do apologize for the quality of it. But today, first off, my name is Austin Paul, and thank you guys all for joining today for this live workshop where I'm going to show you guys how to light a cell phone commercial. I'm a professional product filmmaker, and I specialize in creating different product commercials for companies all around the world. But today, I'm going to show you, using the Godox, Godox lights, how to do a very simple but awesome setup that's super powerful that you can light for a cell phone commercial for a white background and a black background. But before we dive into that, let me talk about some of the problems that you're going to run into when you're usually shooting with um, a cell phone. Cell phones themselves are super, super reflective, and that's going to cause a lot, a lot of issues for you when shooting because you're going to have to deal with the reflections because anything, for example, all the stuff in my studio, any of that is going to show up on your cell phone or your device. So how do we handle that? Well, there's a few different ways, but we're going to dive into it right now. All right. So first things first is I have my product right here for you guys. And my product itself is just the phone. I do apologize. My phone is extremely cracked and destroyed, but this is it. I have my phone, right? And the way that we're going to be able to move our phone, and it's super important, is by controlling our device. And what I built right here is, first off, I have an Adelchrone Head 1, and there's a lot of easier ways. I get it all the time. I'm like, how do you control your product? You can use just a string. But if you really want to control your product and make it, um, you want to make sure that you're controlling your product and you want to make sure that you're able to do exactly what you need it to do. So that's why I use this over anything else. We can use a lazy Susan, you can use a string, but for something like this, you want to be able to stop and start and then be able to time it with your shot. So it's very important. So this is a head one. And the way that I'm mounting the cell phone onto the head one actually is I have a drill bit chuck right here. So this is just goes on the end of a drill. And then I cut off the tip of an iPhone cord right here. And this just plugs in. So it's actually kind of an ingenious way to connect your phone because the problem with phones are, is, the problem with phones is that when you're um, trying to mount them, that there's not many spots to actually connect the phone because these phones are very sleek, as you can see. So the only spot to actually connect and have a stable connection is right there on the charger, as you can see, you guys, right there. So that's what we're doing. And then we just screw this right back into here, and then I'm gonna use my app to control the spinning device. This is gonna create movement, which is very important for our product commercial. Otherwise, you can just have a stationary product, and it's not as exciting, but there's a few ways to create movement. Right now we're doing it with the product, but we're also gonna be doing it with the camera by moving the camera. But let me attach this back on, and then we'll just run through our lighting. Perfect. All right. So the lights that we're using today and the main light to light our product is the Godox 600. Let me tilt this up right here. You definitely don't need the 600. It's very powerful. You don't need something this powerful, but this is what I have from Godox. So this is what we're using. And that's how you kind of do it. You use what you have and you can really switch out lights. But we have the Godox on an Octo Diffusion and it's a big, big, big diffusion and that's very uh, important because what we're going to do is we're going to make sure this diffusion is as close as we can to our product which is right down here and the reason for that is it's going to create a very soft highlight the closer that we have our lights to a reflective product the less we're going to have to worry about our product reflecting unwanted things like everything in my office so very important to bring your your lights as close as you can but we're also going to talk about a little bit later how to control and mitigate all those unwanted reflections. Next, what we're gonna do is Alex is gonna bring the whole computer over here and follow me. Just be careful there, Alex. We're gonna talk about what's behind our magical wall. Keep coming, keep coming. Perfect, 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 perfect. So right here is 
a Matthews 4x4 diffusion. And I have it on a C stand right here. And we're using this as our white backdrop because I'm going to run you guys through how to set up a white backdrop first. Next, what have we've done is I'll kind of show you, Alex, and you come a little bit more, is I've attached four Godox light tubes and I put them in almost a frame shape. And what they're doing is they're aiming right at the back of this diffusion. And the reason for that is that's one of the cleanest ways to get a really nice white background is not actually shoot light on the front of it, but through it. So using a soft diffusion is gonna be very helpful, helpful for this. So I'm gonna turn these lights on. And the trick with these is, is not to point them straight at it, but angle them so that they all kind of fade into the center to have a really nice, clean, even light. Otherwise, if you do straight on, you're gonna have a bunch of hot spots. So I'm gonna turn all these on. Alex is gonna bring that back around so you guys can see. Perfect. Um, maybe turn on the iPad and then we can show the other screen right here. Cool, awesome. So now I have those lights on. The next thing I'm gonna do is turn on my top light. And the back lights I actually have at 100% because we're gonna need enough power to counteract with this. But I'm gonna have this only at 24%. So I just turned on the top light and now we have everything lit up. I know it's very bright and it's hard to see. Unfortunately, um, unfortunately, the way these webcams work, they're not the highest quality. So I'm gonna, we're gonna keep running through it right now, but I'm just gonna explain to you guys what's going on. So we have our product now lit up. The next and most important thing is what you're gonna wanna do is have something like a monitor right here. And the reason for having a monitor for these kind of setups is you wanna be able to control and look at your false colors. Your false colors and reading your IREs is gonna be one of the most important things you can do when shooting white on white or even white on black. And the reason for that is because you're gonna know what your true color temperatures are. And so I'm gonna turn this on right now and I'm gonna kind of read it for you guys because we've <laughs> done this earlier today and unfortunately have had a little bit of an issue with the screen reading but you're gonna be able to kind of see it right here. Perfect, thank you Alex. So we have our phone right in here, which unfortunately you guys are not gonna be able to see, but then we have our false colors right in here. And what we're looking for in our false colors is I'm looking to make sure that our background is gonna be around 94 to 100 IRE, which it is because obviously I've set this up and I'm looking at that and that's going to be all orange. So it's painting an orange color, a nice even orange color on the background. And then my cell phone itself is actually only 58 to 77 IRE. And the reason for that is you don't want the IRE, even though that your phone is white and the background is white, you don't want the IRE of both of your phone and your background to be the same. Otherwise, you're going to lose complete information on the object itself. You're not gonna be able to see your product. It's gonna be blown out or it's gonna blend into the background. So you actually want a contrast and a difference and you want your product to be a little bit dimmer than your background when you're shooting a true white background in the back. So that's extremely, extremely important. And now the next thing I'm gonna tell you guys, now that I have that all set up and I know it because I can see that my phone is all gray, I can see my background is all orange, that's gonna allow me to have the best color and the best look for my product on a white background. But now I'm gonna turn over here. I'm gonna show you guys the camera setup. Perfect, just like that. We're gonna talk a little bit about the camera. First off, don't mind this right here. This is just to send an image for you guys, a wireless image to the monitor itself. What I'm using right now is I'm using the Canon R5 with the 100 millimeter macro. I recommend if you're shooting Canon or Sony to be using the 100 millimeter macro for Canon, and if you're shooting Sony, to be using the 90 millimeter macro. I think those are some of the best lenses that you can use for product filmmaking. And the reason for that is because you're really gonna get a really sharp, clean image if you have the proper aperture. And then you're also gonna get a nice, soft background. And it really just compresses that background and allows you to really focus on that image. 
And it's very versatile as well because you can actually get very close with it because it is macro lens. So this is one of my favorite lenses to use. But for that, a lot of people get very confused and they think that they should be shooting at a low aperture because they've been told on YouTube and all that stuff that a low aperture is going to make your video super cinematic. That's not really the case. I always recommend with a macro lens is to be at least at a nine on your aperture. And that's where more powerful lights do come in handy. But for this right now, I'm actually at an 11 on my aperture and I'm at a 400 on my ISO because I'm just shooting at the color profile, which is the native ISO for Canon for just the basic color profile. If I was gonna shoot on C-Log or RAW, then my native ISO is gonna be 800. And if I need more light, then my native ISO is 3200. But we're always gonna try to keep it at 800 if we're shooting RAW or C-Log. Okay, so now that I have this all set up, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get everything ready. I have my spinner on the app right here. And what that does is it's just gonna rotate my product. So I can just rotate it like this. Boom, boom, boom. Beautiful. Simple, simple, right? And I'm just gonna lock this. And I like to do everything by hand. I'm gonna have Alex rotate that a little bit more right there, perfect. And so I'm just gonna press this. And then I'm gonna go in and just do a slow, easy push in. And then we'll talk about what happens next. Perfect. So it's going to start spinning and then I'm just going to push in, push in, make sure I'm keeping my focus, make sure I'm keeping my focus and boom, just like that. And what that's going to allow me to do is I can take that shot now and you might be wondering, how are you going to remove the base and all that stuff? When you're watching your levels and making sure that you have a clean white background like that, it's beautiful because it's very easy to mask out everything underneath the product. I can literally just mask out the phone and then add a white backdrop in post. And then that will allow me to be able to do pretty much anything I want with the phone. If you've ever seen the Apple iWatch commercial that I've created, you can pretty much take and manipulate that object in post and rotate it, scale it, zoom it in, zoom it out. And as long as you have that clean white backdrop, then as long as you put it on a clean white backdrop and you have a white backdrop in post, you can do anything with it. You can duplicate it. It's a super powerful way to get awesome product shots. And it's only just one shot. But now I'm gonna to talk to you guys about a few other things that you would do before we move on to the black backdrop. Okay. Cool, cool. All right. So when handling your products, what I always am using and obviously I'm not doing it at this moment because uh, it's just my cell phone and we're not worried about keeping it clean. But when I'm handling products, I'm always using microfiber gloves, which you can get right here. These are microfiber gloves and we're always using this when we're touching the product. This is one way to avoid dust specks, smudges or anything because the whole point of doing product filmmaking is you wanna make your product perfect, right? The other thing that we use all the time is the same thing that you use to clean your sensors. We're just gonna use this and we can clean off the product. Super simple, boom, boom, like that. Another thing we like to use is microfiber cloths to rub it off. We even use a lint roller at times. And then we even use compressed air in a can where you can spray it if we need to get it on hard to get off places. But that's what I use when I'm trying to make sure that I'm handling and keeping the product very clean. And it's gonna be very difficult with these because you're gonna be dealing with a lot of reflections. But the next thing I'm going to show you guys, I'm going to turn this off real fast. I just want to turn off the backlights. Perfect, perfect. The other thing I'm going to show you guys, what's very important for handling your reflections is this right here. This is a bounce board in photography, but this is something that I actually just got at the hardware store. And it's insulation board that you couldn't buy. It's super cheap. It comes in four by six feet. And I think they're only like $25 and then I cut them and then place them where I want. And then I put a little bit of gaff tape around them. But as you can see, if I angle it like this, you can see it's starting to light up things because it has a silver side and a white side. And we're using the white side like this, um, like right down here. And we're using that because we wanna make sure that we're gonna have a white highlight around the metal of our product, which is the phone, right? And then down below that, 
I have duvetine because I don't want any unwanted reflections because underneath this duvetine is actually just wood. And if I didn't have this duvetine here, you'd have a warm wood look on the reflections of the phone itself. Um, and that's pretty much how I handle reflections for a white background. Now I'm gonna show you guys how we do a black background. I'm gonna have Alex just turn that, turn that uh, computer, perfect, just like that. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna remove this diffusion right here. Just like that. And right back here, I know I'm really far away, but right back here is just a black backdrop. And what's great about this setup and building this mirror frame right here is that we can still shoot through it and still use it to highlight our phone right here. And we don't really have to change too much with our black backdrop because we're just gonna shoot straight through to the black. And then the only thing that you wanna do now is because now that you're getting rid of the white that's back there, you're gonna start seeing a lot more reflections on the screen while it's rotating. And you wanna control those reflections. And the way that I do that is I use something like diffusion paper right here. I'm just gonna drop it down, bring it in like this, plant it, and I have it on a C-stand. And what that's gonna do is when you have your phone rotate right here, for example, let me turn this screen off here. As I have the phone rotate, this black screen is gonna pick up everything. So right now, it actually, if I'm looking straight at it, it can see you guys back there. But if I rotate it like this, and then I have it rotate this way, I can have this diffusion right here pick up the black screen. And that's what's gonna be able to control your reflections is using, using diffusion paper like that. I can put diffusion paper here, and then I can even put diffusion paper between here to here of the camera lens. And when that rotates, then it's only gonna have a white highlight right there. When working with lights, you're always very concerned about spill. Spill is something that you have to deal with all the time. And with working with reflections, it's almost very similar where you don't want, you wanna control your spill, but you actually wanna control your reflections by kind of caging them in. And you can use that with using diffusion paper on one side if you want a white highlight on your reflection or you can use it something like this with duvetine and I can take this duvetine right here and I can lift it up and put it right here to have a black highlight on this side while I'm shooting in. And so you can have a negative fill or you can have a fill with a white bounce. And that's really how you're gonna manage your highlights when you're doing this. Let me tilt this up. Perfect. And then the same thing goes for your black background. Once you have your black background set up, you can literally take this in post and you once it's all masked out, you can have the phone flipping in a black open space. You can duplicate the phone and there's a lot of cool things that you can do in post with this setup. Super simple, only, well, I mean, it's technically four lights in the back and one up top, but you could really do this with two lights. And the way that you do that is you just take your light and shoot it directly at the back of the diffusion itself. And so you can really do this setup with two lights, super simple, super powerful, and you can create pretty much unlimited shots with that kind of setup. Um, a lot of people ask, can you, can you use green screens with it? And you can, you can use green screens, but again, it's the same thing with you, like mitigating your reflections on it. Once you start to rotate, the screen in the metal is gonna pick up that green. If it picks up that green, then you're gonna have an issue with when you're trying to remove the green in post because you're gonna start removing your product. So you just have to work and take your time by mitigating the reflections using diffusion paper or using something like a flag or a negative fill, which would be a duvetine. Lighting is a very, it can be, lighting can be very daunting, you guys, but with it, like it's all about just being patient and playing with it. You're gonna fail. I fail all the time when I'm learning how to light things. I struggle all the time with it. And it's a very time staking process, but just take your time and adjust and know that when you fail, it's just to readjust and then keep trying to tweak it a little bit more and more. Once you understand the basics of lighting, that's gonna be the most important thing because that's what's really gonna set apart your videos 
of anything, your commercials or anything from other people's on the quality and looks of it. Content is always king, but if you want to make your videos look better with quality, then lighting is going to do that for you. Um, so just play around with lighting, get comfortable, take the time when you can to just go into your own place and just play around with it and see what lights do to your different products. They're all going to react differently. And that's kind of a fun thing because it's almost like a puzzle that you're playing with. At this time, I'd love to take any questions for you guys. Like I said, this is a super simple setup and I think we kind of covered most of it, but if you guys have any questions about it or just questions about filmmaking in general, just feel free to ask. And we'll roll this around so I can sit down here for a second. Perfect, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, so somebody asked what that platform is. Let me grab that real fast here. Perfect, perfect. So what I built here is we're using a product spinner. It's by Edelkrone. It's actually very cool. It's just, it's called a head one and you can attach different plates to it and different things to it. But what I've done because I wanted something that's a little bit more flexible, I have attached a drill chuck. And so if you know what, like the end of a drill, right? Uh, which opens and closes, as you can see, like right here, the open and closes. So you can put like different drill bits in. We're using that because a lot of the times I'm using sticks or I'm using um, like different kind of poles or different devices to attach or connect to my products so that they spin. And so I'm just using this drill chuck right here. And then I've rigged it so that I can screw on to three, four screw right here. And then, yeah, pretty much you can fit anything in there. And what we've used for the cell phone is I've used this plug. We just cut it off and we use it because it fits straight into the phone itself, like so. And that allows me to do a very secure rotation. Again, like I said, a lot of people that I've shown this stuff to before, they're always like, well, um, can't you just use a string? And you could use a string to spin it. But you're not gonna be able to stop it and you're not gonna be able to control it. And it's all about controlling. Another thing I can do is I can show you guys really fast the end result of what you can get with something that I just set up right there. So let me just pull up the video really fast for you guys. Let's go to here. So I was hired by a client to actually get this shot for their commercial that they're doing. It was just a one shot for a product video, but let me share my screen right here. Perfect, share screen, and perfect. So this was shot for a client, and as you can see, it's the white background, the same exact lighting setup. And the reason why we have it controlled like that is they want it to spin, and then their device is on the back of the phone like that, and then it closes and shuts. And now, it's a very basic shot, as you can see, of it just spinning in a circle. But uh, what you can do in post, and what I actually did is I can show you Another example after what I did with it, and I did this with it. So let me stop sharing and let me share again. Share screen, boom, boom. And then what I did was I ended up doing this right here with it. So as you can see, now that the phone is rotating in a circle like that and coming back. So again. You can do very powerful things with just that setup right there. And that's it, guys. That's how I shoot product commercials, especially any kind of tech things, things with a lot of reflection. And that's how I'm going to handle them. A lot of the times, if you're being hired for a cell phone commercial or anything like that, they're going to give you a lot of uh, phones without the actual thing inside of it because you're just shooting the product itself. But yeah, I... Thank you guys so much for joining us with me today. I had a great time. If anybody has any more questions, feel free to ask. You can always email me and reach out to me for questions as well. I'm always here to help and help people that are learning how to and also want to get into more product filmmaking. Or you can follow me on my Instagram at Austin Paul, just my name. Super simple, guys. All right. I hope everybody has an amazing day or night.